Hi. Uh, hello, everyone. Hi, welcome to this session on current affairs. In this session, we are going to go through a few of the important news articles which appeared in today's Hindu newspaper. All right. So without delaying it further, let's start. The first news article which you will find in the editorial section of the Hindi newspaper is with respect to India's press freedom. So as you all know, uh, World Press Freedom Index, which was recently released by Reporters Without Border, it has ranked India. India has ranked. Uh, India has been ranked at 159. So 2024 may India ki ranking jo hai wo 159 hai. Last year the ranking was 161. So marginally India has improved its rank in this World Press Freedom Index. However, when we when we see when we see it in the context of other countries, then our rank is probably in the in uh, in the last segment, right? So uh, countries like Pakistan, countries like Sri Lanka, Nepal, Maldives, these countries which are our neighbors, they have scored better in the World Press Freedom Index, and that is a matter of concern. So Pakistan's ranking is 152, Sri Lanka's ranking is 115, Nepal's ranking is 74. However, our ranking, our ranking is still 159. Fine. So the this particular uh, index and the report released by World Press uh, report released by uh, Reporters Without Border, what they have said that the slight increase in the ranking is mainly because of others countries slipping into their ranking. So countries like occupied uh, Palestinian territories, UAE, Turkey, then Argentina. Um, South Africa, oh, sorry, Argentina, they have slipped in the in the ranking. And that is the reason India's rank has increased. Now, when we see this particular press freedom index, they uh, they have various kind of indicators. One is political indicator. So the entire index is based on certain parameters. You know? So reporters without borders, they analyze each and every parameters. What are the parameters that they have? So one is political indicator, then you have economic indicator, you have social indicator, then you have security indicators. So based on the questionnaire that they release, India's uh, performance has improved only in one aspect, and that is security indicator. Baki political, so economic, social, in sari indicators, mein India ka performance has gone down. Another important thing that uh, that was uh, analyzed in this article was with respect to India's status and press freedom uh, globally. So, what are the countries? Is this we are comparing India ko. What are the countries? Their situation is the same, hai, just like India. So, countries like UAE, Turkey, Russia, Palestine, and occupied Palestinian territories. So, the amount of freedom which is enjoyed by these countries. Uh, it is very much similar to what is in, enjoyed by Indian press, and this is not good. This is also not good in the context of a vibrant democracy. So, as you all know, uh, media press is considered as the fourth pillar in a democracy, and press plays a very important role by uh, by linking those who are governing us and those who are governed. So, government and citizens, in ke beech ka jo crucial link hai, ye link establish hota hai press ke through. Okay. information is uh, disseminated right so press plays a very important role in a democracy more than that press is also one of the uh, one of the pillars which is there for creating some accountability on the government so government se sahi sawal puchna ye bhi press ka ek bahut important uh, role hai uh, uh, but however when the press is not free then it can also create some sort of distortion in the democracy Okay. So this is one important thing that we must uh, uh, keep in mind. Then uh, what are the countries that have uh, played well in this test? So all the Scandinavian countries, they have done quite well in, uh, in this press freedom index, World Press Freedom Index. Um, there are some countries like uh, recently Israel, um, they have banned Al Jazeera in the entire, in, the, in their country. Then Wall Street Journal, Journal, they are also shifting their headquarters from Hong Kong to um, Singapore. So press ko leke concerns jo hai, wo across the country, across the globe, raise kiye ja rahe. Uh, 
uh, what are the countries who have performed who are the worst performers in this index so you have syria you have eritrea and then you have afghanistan they are so they are featured uh, they are there at the bottom list then this is the press freedom map that we have here uh, so the countries who are in yellow they are they have satisfactory situation uh, the one in green uh, they have very good situation when it comes to press but as you can see most of the uh, most of the territories here like india china russia the entire arabs you, you have egypt then you have uh, you know um, uae iran all these countries they are in red zone so red zone they depict very severe uh, red zone countries they have very severe situation when it comes to freedom of press all right and uh, satisfactory condition is there in canada satisfactory condition in most of the european western european countries south africa australia so there you have satisfactory situation noticeable problems are there in usa you brazil then some of the eastern european countries so there you have noticeable problems all right then uh, I have one question to all of you. I would uh, I would request you all. If you have any question, can answer. But then please write it in the comment box. So now that we are talking about press freedom, uh, can you please tell me when is the World uh, Press Day? World Press Day is celebrated on which day? If you know the answer, please tell us in the comment box. Okay. So yeah, you have to tell me through the comment box. All right. So uh, now let us uh, know a few facts about Reporters Without Border. So it's an NGO uh, which is headquartered at Paris. Uh, this uh, this NGO it talks about. Uh, I mean, it works for the freedom of press. And by freedom of press, what we mean is that the ability of journalists to protect, produce, and disseminate news in the public interest independently without political economic legal or social interference so basically uh, it analyzes uh, the situation in a particular country with respect to journalistic freedom and how much interference is there on journalists on the press from political economic legal or social side right and then also what are the threats uh, which are there which concerns their physical as well as mental safety okay so reporters without border press freedom index india's ranking and um, world press freedom day these are few very important facts that you must know and which are very important from the point of view of clat 2025 examination moving on the next editorial that we will be discussing here is was on climate change so the recent climate change verdict supreme court ne bhi recently a climate change pe judgment diya hai and supreme court has Uh, held that uh, extension of constitutional right of life to right to life and personal liberty okay right to life and personal liberty which is in article 21 of the constitution along with right to equality which is in article 14 of the constitution these two rights also include right to be free from ill effects of climate change right now this judgment is very important bahut important judgment hai ye kyun kyunki for the first time supreme court um has said that right to be free from ill effects of climate change change is also part of uh, is also a fundamental right which flows from article 21 and article 14 of the constitution now the uh, ramification of the consequences of this judgment will be quite profound kaise kaise ho sakta hai wo hum thoda dekhte hain pehla to ye ki ill effects of climate change so climate change se related jo bhi ill effects hain वो अगर हमें उसे अवॉइड करना है दैट आल्सो मींस दैट वी नीड टू प्रोटेक्ट आवर एनवायरनमेंट एंड द स्टेट इज ड्यूटी बाउंड टू प्रोटेक्ट एनवायरनमेंट क्यों क्योंकि राइट टू क्लीन एनवायरनमेंट अगेन इज अ फंडामेंटल राइट अंडर आर्टिकल 21 ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस आर्टिकल 48 ए ऑफ आवर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन डायरेक्टिव प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ स्टेट पॉलिसी इट आल्सो मैंडेट्स इट आल्सो यू नो इट आल्सो प्रोवाइड्स फॉर प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ environment then article 51a fundamental duty uh, the citizens of this country they are duty bound to take care of the environment okay so these are some uh, some of the constitutional provisions which talks about protection of the environment and uh, for ensuring that the climate change 
द इल इफेक्ट ऑफ क्लाइमेट चेंज इज मिनिमाइज ठीक है सो दैट इज देयर now when we analyze this particular judgment especially in the context of this editorial what we find is that the author of this uh, article they have pointed out few flaws that could potentially undermine the mitigating climate change crisis impact theek hai kya hai ye so uh, non fossil fuel and renewable category energy jis ke upar government ka kafi zyada focus hai especially large hydro power plants and nuclear power plants they also have certain environmental and social they also come with certain environmental and social risk to ye jo environmental and social uh, risk hai uh, isko kis tarah se mitigate karna hai that is not there then we also have to analyze that uh, mega solar power plant mega wind projects what can be the adverse impacts uh, of these uh, these uh, renewable energy plants theek hai because it will involve displacement and destruction of wildlife habitats so that can also potentially impact and create more uh, uh, that can have more effects on climate change all right next so despite investment in renew renewable energy the government continues to support coal mining so coal mining abhi bhi chal rahi hai and coal is one of the major source of our energy so the government must come up with strategies for phasing out uses of coal like say for example recently the g7 they had their meeting so g7 group of seven countries they have publicly announced that by 2035 they will phase out uses of coal okay which is a good thing uh, government of india which is also a signatory of unfcc and is a party to uh, paris agreement they are also legally bound to reduce the impact of climate change and and you know to contain a uh, carbon footprint तो इसको किस तरह से करना है एंड कोल का यूजेस किस तरह से कम करना है इसके ऊपर भी गवर्नमेंट शुड मेक सम पॉलिसी देन ऑल्टरनेटिव लाइक डी सेंट्रलाइज रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी सोर्सेज आर ओवरलुक डिस्पाइट देयर पोटेंशियल टू मीट एनर्जी डिमांड्स मोर सस्टेनेबली सो द ऑथर्स हैव आर्ग्यूड दैन इंस्टेड ऑफ गोइंग फॉर मेगा रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी सोर्सेज इट्स बेटर टू गो फॉर डी सेंट्रलाइज रिन्यूएबल सोर्सेज सो इट कैन बी इट कैन बी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ चेक डैम्स इट कैन बी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ स्मॉल Uh, solar power plants small wind farms like that instead of having mega farms then the judgment could benefit from considering rights of nature and indigenous people in exploring less damaging energy generation methods so as we all know the ill effects of climate change will be borne more by the indigenous people of the country your tribal population hai. let's say for example the shopian tribes or the jharwa tribe of andaman kal ko agar climate change ho raha hai sea level uh, jo hai wo rise kar raha hai so people residing in these small islands they will face more problem apart from that they do not even have the requisite resources to tackle climate change to iske wajah se article 14 bhi violate ho gaya theek hai so we need to consider the rights of nature and the rights of indigenous population when we talk about ill effects of climate change and how it can have an impact profound impact on their livelihood then the indian model of development which is focused on mega projects it can cause deforestation and displacement ab me- mega solar power plant agar hame create karna hai so jo mega uh, power plant ke liye you we need a vast piece of land we need to deforest that particular land maybe displace a lot of village people living in those villages so this contradicts the constitutional rights and it requires some reevaluation all right then the courts directive to re examine such project projects could lead to fundamental shifts towards sustainability and justice or reinforce ecologically flawed approaches so what we need to understand here is the authors they have argued that the court and the government must reexamine these mega power plants so that sustainability and justice can be furthered right and uh, it can it has the potential to reinforce ecologically flawed approaches so this is one very important point now there are a couple of questions that i have for you to know the answer please write it in the comment box first question is what is the name of this judgment so if you know the name of this judgment please write it in the comment box supreme court ka ye jo verdict hai ye is is case ka naam kya hai agar aapko pata hai to wo aap comment pe karke hame bataiye second thing is that there was a bird a couple of birds were involved in this case do birds hain jinke bare mein supreme jiske context mein ye case jo hai wo decide hua hai rajasthan mein ye milte hain and migratory birds if you know the answer if you know the name of these two birds 
प्लीज राइट इट इन दी कॉमेंट बॉक्स ठीक है ऑल राइट सो दैट्स ऑल वी हैव इन टूडेज क्लास इन टूडेज सेशन आई होप टू सी यू टूमोरो ऑल राइट थैंक यू सो मच गैस थैंक यू